Welcome to JSTV, a ministry of Joshua Springs Calvary Chapel in beautiful Yucca Valley, California. We'd like to thank you for joining us today for our verse-by-verse study through the Bible with Senior Pastor Gerald Hagerman. We would also like to encourage you to grab your Bible, maybe a cup of coffee, and join us for the service already underway. Well, good morning, Joshua Springs. Will you stand and join us in worship?
thankful for your grace on top of grace, Lord God. Even though we don't deserve it, Lord God, you lavish your love and your grace on us, Lord God. We are a thankful congregation this morning, Lord God. We pray for your spirit. We pray for your power. We pray for all that you have for us, Lord God, and we surrender everything that we have to you. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Well, happy new year, everyone. You may be seated. So we are so excited to start the new year. Everything starts full force today. So Pastor BJ is going to start tonight the book of Esther. So that's six o'clock in the uh, sanctuary and we invite you to come and ladies are ready for Merrily. Ladies study is coming. I missed you. And I, yes, we're excited. It's been weeks. But you know what? We are meeting back again on Tuesday morning at 9.30 in the sanctuary. And we're also going to come back that evening if you can't make it to the morning at 7 p.m. Child care is available for both sessions. And we're going to have a great time. Did you know that whatever you've been through, God has made you a specialist in that to help someone else? And so, ladies, we're going to come out. We're going to put God first this new year. Let's grow deeper than we've ever been. Tell your next-door neighbor to come with you. Reach out to those that are around, and let's study the Word of God. Tuesday morning, I'll be waiting for you at the door. God bless you. All right. Awesome. And then on Wednesday, our Wednesday night services will begin and resume. Uh, Pastor BJ's in the book of Exodus, so we invite you to be a part of that. Then on Thursday, we are very excited. Pastor Mike McIntosh, one of the original Calvary Chapel pastors from Horizon Christian Fellowship in uh, San Diego, is going to be our men's stake and study speaker. And that's going to take place here in the Thunderdome. So we invite you to be a part of that, guys. But we do need you to sign up. It's free. But we need to know how many of you are, go are coming. Uh, so uh, Jack is back here in the back. He'll be happy to put your name on the list. And again, that's going to be here on Thursday night. On Friday night, another free event. We're, we're starting a ministry called Joy Equals Us. Joyous. And it's going to be for married couples of all ages. And again, it's a free event. Uh, the church is going to provide a dessert uh, that evening. So you don't have to worry about bringing anything. The only people that we need to know for sure are coming are those with children. Because we will have free child care. But in order to adequately staff it, we need to know how many of you are coming. So if you can call the church office, let them know that you are coming Friday night with children. You don't have to let, if you don't have children, first of all, you can say hallelujah. And <laughs> second of all, <laughs> I'm a grandpa. So you know what's wonderful living through uh, child rearing ages is that uh, you get to have grandchildren, but they go home. Somebody else takes care of them. So I, I guess I'm still in PTSD therapy. But anyway. <laughs> No, we, we love kids here, obviously, but uh, we do want you to sign up for that. That will be Friday night. We're going to do four of these this spring, and uh, so we invite you to be a part. We'll also, and this will probably be one of the last calls, we are doing a marriage retreat cruise, and that information is in your bulletin as well. There, you call... Uh, 
the Carnival Cruise Line, give them the code number so you get the special discounts. But now is time to sign up. We're going to have a blast on that. But we also want to make free events for those that can't do that. So again, watch in your bulletin because these are going to be hosted by all the great Calvary Chapel pastors that come and minister uh, to our CBI. So Lloyd and Karen Pulley from Old Bridge Calvary will be our next one after Mike and Sandy. So watch your bulletin for that. Also some things uh, besides having Calvary Bible Institute, we have Joshua Springs Bible College. In that, anybody can come. And it's not a live-in program. We have two nights a week that we do that at. And uh, Charlie teaches the general epistles. Pastor Bob teaches the book of Matthew. Charlie's class is on Friday at 6. Uh, is it 6 or 6.30? 6. Six. And uh, Pastor Bob's is 6 to 8. And they're in the cafe and the welcome center. So we invite you to be a part. Then also... Pastor Fim is heading up an opportunity to take a collective trip to the Ark, uh, which is in Kentucky. I have, Marilee and I had the opportunity to go last year. Fantastic. It totally exceeded my expectations. It helps you understand scientifically how this could happen. It's all built to scale that the Bible describes. So it's a great trip. Last year, we were going to try to take a trip with a travel agency, and we realized it was expensive. By booking it yourselves, and Finn will tell you how to do that, it's half price. So $700 flying out of Palm Springs, back into Palm Springs, three nights, uh, tickets into the uh, Creation Museum and the Ark, and a paddle boat dinner cruise on the Cincinnati River. It's going to be a blast, but here's the thing. We actually can only take about 12 more people. So if you're interested, I would uh, highly advise you to get signed up right away for that. And then Marilee and I are hosting an Imperial Splendor Tour. That's coming up in September where we go to Budapest and Salzburg, Austria. We see these most gorgeous European capitals ending up in a place called Oberammergau, Germany in which every 10 years since the 1600s, this little village has reenacted the life and the death and the passion of Jesus in this unbelievable outdoor theater that they have that seats thousands and thousands of people, but you can only go to it once every 10 years. So we bought tickets several years ago. I was just notified by our tour company. I thought we were, we were booked, but they were able to get us two more seats. So there's one more couple that wants to go and we have a space for a single woman. So if you're a single woman, we have a, a woman going that can use a roommate. So if you're interested, see us on those. And with that, let's stand up, greet one another, and welcome everyone. This is Audrey Heather with Joshua Springs Calvary Chapel. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of our ministry. And we would like to give you a special gift today. Now, if you want to help support this ministry, you can go to www.joshuasprings.org. Once you're on the JS website, click Simple Give under the Donate tab. Donate any amount to our television radio ministry, and we will send you a copy of our latest Joshua Springs worship album. Once again, we just want to thank you so much for your support of this ministry. And we pray that our ministry and this new worship album will bless you greatly. Good morning. Regarding the ark, please call the church 365-0769. Regarding information, and Femme or Debbie or someone will hook you up with that, because there is actually nothing in the back right now. So call the church Monday regarding the ARC tour. Let's pray for the offering. Gracious Lord, we thank you very much for all that you give us, Lord, and literally the ground underneath our feet, the beautiful blue sky today, 
And Lord, we just want to say thank you and bless you and bless this place with these tithes and these offerings. But Lord, we need your wisdom. We need your strength. We need you to guide us through these things. And we ask for that for those that disperse the money. And Lord, as we give these things, we ask for that mighty blessing upon it. We ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Christ the solid rock. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen.
Lord, we are so excited. You have done great things. You are doing great things. And you will do great things. And among them, Lord, you call us to be your people in these last days to live as a witness for you. And Lord, we thank you for the vision that you've given our church family here. That the fields are white. They're ready for harvest. And Lord, that miraculously, by a move of your Holy Spirit, you're doing more than any of us could dream or imagine. And it's happening around the world and enabling us to be a part. So Lord, we give you all the glory and honor now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, before we get into the scriptures, I want to tell you a story. Last year when we went to Israel, Riley and I ended up going to the Republic of Georgia. Our, some of our early Bible college graduates from the 1990s, Vlad and Saveta from Russia, ended up coming to Bible college over here, graduating, went back to Nizhny Novgorod, Russia, and have had one of the best Calvary chapels in all of Russia for over 25 years. They began to feel in their hearts that, that in order to have a Bible college, they'd have to leave Russia because the, the government officials were cutting down. It would be impossible to do that, but... The Republic of Georgia, which sits right between Russia, Turkey, and Iran, is the Republic of Georgia. And all of these people can come to Georgia without visas, including Americans. And so it would be a great place to have a Calvary Bible Institute of the Republic of Georgia. So as they go there, miraculously, a guy that they hadn't talked to in 20 years from America calls them up while they're in the Republic of Georgia and says, what are you doing? And they explained to him. And he said, God told me to give you money. And so he gave them $85,000 to buy a three-story house. They're going to live in the top floor, a floor for boys and a floor for girls. So they began to remodel it. So Riley and I end up going to the Republic of Georgia where Rachel's there. Where is Rachel? She's back here at the table. Rachel was a CBI graduate. She's from originally the UK, and she was serving in the Republic of Georgia. So we go over there. Well, we meet a young guy by the name of Ankit. He's from India. And it turns out there are 3,000 Indians studying medicine in the capital, Tbilisi, of the Republic of Georgia. Anyway... Ankit and I ended up having a day together with Rachel and everybody. We were together, but it was just one of those divine intersections. And, and I knew it was more than just even that one day uh, that God had caused our paths to connect. There was just a unity in the, in the brotherhood of believers. Well, as it came out, sometime later, our our children's village, our orphanage in Malawi, we had a young worker, she had children of her own as well, had a severe heart problem and was going to die. And Tracy, who heads that up over there with Marilee, Tracy calls us and she said, Sheila is going to die without an operation. We couldn't send her to South Africa because it was way too expensive in South Africa. We couldn't bring her to America because we couldn't afford an operation there. But she said, I've done some research, and for $12,000, we can do the uh, operation in India. And I said, I happen to know somebody from India. And so we are talking about this, getting ready to call Ankit. He calls me out of the blue. Hadn't talked to him in, in months. He calls me and I said, I cannot believe that you're talking to me because I was going to call you. And I told him the story and he says, our family has a huge ministry over there with lots of doctors as well. And he made the connections for us to send Sheila to his family in India to have the surgery, and I'm very happy to tell you, Sheila is thriving and alive today. But I'm even tremendously happy 
to introduce to you Pastor BK from India. He is Ankit's dad. So let's welcome Pastor BK up here to the stage. And so we've had the opportunity to spend some time together. They have an absolute amazing ministry. Uh, and I'm going to let Pastor BK tell you a little bit about it. Good morning. Happy New Year to all of you. I would like to say thank you, sir, because of this great opportunity. We are in India at this moment facing a lot of trouble because of the present government is not interested that the God's work should go on. So very technically, wisely, they are cutting the vein of economy and all round God's work that can be stopped totally. But because of God's grace, we have initiated wisely through wisdom, we have initiated the social work like orphanages and adoption center, English medium schools, and open shelter, and in this, that way, and specifically the women's empower, empowerment programs. And the women empowerment program is like this. The women, uh, we have two groups. Every three months, we are taking 50, 50, below 18 girls. And uh, those who are, uh, there is a possibility of uh, going inclined to prostitution or involved. And 18 to 35, those who are involved on the same region, we have met two groups. We are surveying them, talking to them very wisely, asking them to come. And we want them to take them three months training, life skill, all the government programs and the awareness about their life. At the same time, the vocational training we do, like beautician, tailoring, computer education, and all this way, they are tra being trained for three months. After three months, again four months, they are going for uh, governmental, full-fledged vocational training. And after seven months... So uh, let, me, let me make sure everybody's understanding. So they have a ministry to rescue girls that are being sex trafficked. And so... <laughs> so they have two groups, under 18 and then over 18 where they train them, help set them free, because just like sex trafficking all over the world, they're held as slaves. And then they train them to be beauticians and other jobs uh, so that they can be free. Is that phenomenal? Thank you. And then tell them how many pastors that you support and how many churches there are. 65 full-fledged pastors that we are supporting and uh, and uh, rest uh, total 150 rest people a little little we support i was talking about just uh, around 20 dollars to 65 we support per month and other pastor 50 uh, 10 dollars in that way they are happy and rejoicing in the lord we have 54 house churches where 30 to 40 people they gather together and we have 20 full place church. So, so, in the so everybody understands. They, they have 20 churches with buildings. They have 40 house churches. And each one of those house churches has 30 to 40 people in them. Because again, if you've been following the news, the current prime minister is antagonistic against Christians. And so, uh, you know, some of this stuff, they have to be very careful how they're doing. And because of this ministry, specifically we started schools, 32 small and big English medium school. Although profit is there or not there, that is not important, but the ministry is important. So anti-Christians, those who are against uh, the gospel, these people, their children are reading. In that way, we are attracting them and going on piercing themselves inside and deep inside and going on in the ministry. So uh, how many schools? At uh, 32, 32 schools. That is that amazing? Then they have orphanages that there's five or four? Uh, four. Four orphanages that have a total of around 400 kids. Yeah. 
and specifically these children are from vulnerable area like uh, rescued and maybe mishandled by the uh, human trafficking peoples and the dalals and middlemen so these children we are psychologically emotionally very cordially we are bringing them to the position then slowly we are injecting the gospel so that they become much stronger and in the forthcoming days they are much much stronger in the sight of the lord so We have a family picture here. He has an older daughter that's married, uh, but this is Ankit here, right here. This is uh, his wife right here, and let's pray for Ankit. He just took his um, uh, medical exams. He'll know in 19 days how he did. So, Lord, we thank you for this young man that you have a great calling upon his life. We pray, Lord Jesus, that Amen. he would pass this Amen. exam to be able to continue Amen, in Lord. ministry Jesus. and then medically helping people in Jesus' name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. This is his daughter, and her name is? Yeah, Sveta. Sveta. And she is praying about coming to Calvary Bible Institute in Yucca Valley. So, so... Let's pray that we can help work that out because one of the long-term goals is to start a Calvary Bible Institute in India as well, and so she could be a part of that. The next picture that we have here. Yeah, this is the Arfan children, and specifically 400 children in four units, and very wisely taking the help of the government. Help means just recognition. Self, we are supporting from our school money, and why we are doing this, the children are rescued, they are villages, they are parents, they are surrounding neighbors and others. These people are amazing. They are saying how these children were thrown out and being taken care of. And in that way, we are getting the boost of supporting the ministry and we are not getting any opposition, although the government is very strong to do or stop the ministry. In this way, wisely doing all the social, socio-emotional work, we are enlarging the tent of God and we are doing well. And this, this next, yeah, isn't that awesome? Here's the next picture. These are the girls, specifically uh, sexually abused or gang raped, or maybe captive or somewhere they were being kept. Uh, in that way, these children are being brought to us. We to, it took minimum six months, seven months to bring them to the normalcy because they were frightened, worried, and they, don't, they want to escape. They want to go here and there, mentally upset. So slowly, uh, within a year, we have initiated uh, giving them the gospel. And now, because of the word of God, Although we are not showing it to the government or other people, but very nicely, wisely, we are giving the gospel. And because of the gospel, they are being, having peace, wisdom. They are reading in our English medium school, and they are hearing the Lord. And the fear of the Lord has made them wider and wider, and they are doing well. Isn't that awesome? And then the young man here on the end, he was kept as a slave for three years chained in a room where all he did all day long, never got to go outside. He was treated as an animal, and he cut up chickens all day and night for three years, and they rescued that great young man. Yeah. And this boy, now he's so much uh, delighted, excited. He was in the prison, uh, imprisonment uh, by the, uh, these uh, cruelty people. Uh, and they were misusing him. In that way, when he came out, uh, it took minimum uh, three months to brought him to the normalcy. Slowly, just uh, very cordially, as if a member of our family, we just uh, treat the boy. And now, this boy is a best artist. Uh, he can draw the picture of me, yours, anywhere. So he can see you, immediately he can draw it. And he is drawing the Jesus pictures and all these, and also talking about the Bible to his colleagues to his friends, those who are inside the campus, inside the orphanages. So he is a leader now and he's so excited and so means uh, spiritually uh, guided. He's talking about Jesus and uh, he's taking also the Sunday school among the small kids. So we are appreciating God because of this boy who was bondage for three years and now he is released and getting the God's peace Isn't and he is awesome? excited. And so 
Pastor BK, at the end of the service, under the big J or S over here where Rachel's standing, we have a table back there with some information on there. We also have a container there if you would like to help. For these pastors, it costs $20 a month to fully support a pastor in India. And so just think, for all of us, if we just made a little sacrifice in our life, threw in a $20 bill, we are putting a pastor full-time in the field for one month. And I want to tell you that whatever we do for God, that it, it goes on our account. But how awesome is that? I can't imagine a, a place for a $20 bill that would accomplish more than that. And so he's going to be there at the end of the service with Rachel to be able to talk to you. Then also, I want to invite you, tomorrow morning he's going to be giving his testimony as a miraculous testimony of how his dad came to, to be the Lord and his mom and also himself. And so we want to invite you to Calvary Bible Institute. We're going to be there tomorrow and that's at 8 o'clock in the morning, anybody wants to be a part. He'll also be here tonight to visit with you uh, before and after the tonight service as well. He's going to stay with us till Wednesday. So if anybody wants to meet with him, we can now uh, work out a specific time. The other thing that they have, they have uh, orphanages where they adopt out babies. Uh, so if uh, that ends up being something that you're interested in. And again, he's going to be here for a couple days. We'll be happy to, to be able to share with you. And again, Pastor BK, on behalf of our church family here, you were so gracious in opening up your homes and your lives to be able to help Sheila from Africa and Tracy. Uh, it is a tremendous honor to have you in our church home family. God bless you. Is God doing great things all over the world? Isn't that awesome? And my friends, today we're in Mark chapter 13. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you ahead of time, I originally planned on finishing Mark 13 today. I'm not, so you can relax. When I'm only halfway through and you go, look what time it is, you can relax. We're still almost done. So we'll finish up Mark 13 uh, next week. But I do want to begin... And again, the first half of Mark chapter 13, I covered in depth last week. You can go back and pick it up. But in the gospel of Mark, beginning in verse number one, then as he, Jesus, went out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, teacher, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answered and said to him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, the temple in the days of Jesus was one of the wonders of the world. And so the disciples are like trying to give Jesus a guided tour. From the Mount of Olives, which sits taller than the Temple Mount in the city of Jerusalem, that's where you get these beautiful panoramic views. Still to this day, you've seen pictures of Jerusalem that's taken from this vantage point. But Jesus then tells these disciples, because this was the very house of God, that not one stone's going to be left upon another. Now, in their minds, the only way that could happen if it was the end of the age. And so Jesus, he begins to tell them and speak forth a prophecy. And my friends, since I've been going to Israel in the 1980s, you couldn't see this. But as they've excavated the city of Jerusalem down to the level that it was in Jesus' time, to this very day, you see all these massive stones fallen as a memorial, as a testimony to the prophecy of Jesus exactly fulfilled. And my friends, when we look at the Bible, and this is what separates the Bible from every other book in the world, it tells us beforehand the things that are going to take place. And my friends, if every prophecy in the Bible that has already come to pass and been fulfilled does that then testify to the prophecies that are yet to take place 
that they will be fulfilled. And so we got to recognize the days in which we live in are critical days. So as Jesus is telling them, not one stone will be left upon another, here in the Gospel of Mark, they ask two questions. Now, in their mind, it was one question. When's all this going to happen? And when's the end of the age going to come? Because they couldn't separate it. In the Gospel of Matthew, there's actually three questions. It begin, they thought that it was one question. It was all going to happen at the same time. Now as he sat opposite of the temple mount, opposite of the temple, four of these disciples, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, asked him privately, tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign that they will be fulfilled? Jesus would say to Jerusalem, how often I have wanted to gather you, but you, you would not. And my friends, in 70 AD, Titus and the Roman Empire, which basically the legions came from what is the Islamic world of, of Turkey, present day Iran, that's where these legions came from that destroyed Jerusalem. But as they destroyed Jerusalem, it was dispersed around the world. As it was dispersed around the world, if you've ever gone to Rome or seen a picture of the Colosseum in Rome, the Colosseum was built by Jewish slaves that they took at the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. They all went to Rome where they built the Colosseum that is still standing to this very day. Jews were dispersed around the world. And my friends, again, in the prophecy of the book of Ezekiel, all of a sudden Ezekiel sees a vision of dry bones coming together. And he's asked a question, can these bones live? And he says, Lord, you know. Then miraculously... As the world watched in horror the realities of the Nazi Holocaust, because you have to understand something, anti-Semitism, the hatred of the Jews, is demonic. It has always been. There is not one other people on the face of the planet that more people have plotted not just their destruction, but their complete extermination. Why? Because Satan is trying to kill every single Jew because he thinks by doing that he can prove the Bible wrong. But my friends, regardless of what's ever happened to them in their life, they are resilient because they are God's chosen people. And so Israel was born as a nation with a few refugees from the Holocaust, the very first nation, on May 14th, 1948, when David Ben-Gurion said this, that Ezekiel chapter 37 has been fulfilled in your hearing. Israel is a nation. Within seconds of declaring themselves a nation, the United States of America was the first nation to recognize them. But almost immediately before this infant nation could even take its first breath, they were attacked on all sides by the Arab armies who outmanned them, outgunned them, outnumbered them, outmachined uh, them in every way. And there's all kinds of stories and documentaries of the miracles that God did that Israel was even born again as a nation. And then, my friends, that happened May 14th, 1948. In 1967, backed by the Soviet Union, which had nuclear subs off the coast of Israel. Israel was a tiny sliver of a nation. In fact, in one place, it was 18 miles wide. And again, backed by the Soviet Union, Egypt and Jordan and Syria and Lebanon and Iraq were poised to strike for the utter annihilation of the nation of Israel, killing every man, woman, and child. Miraculously, Israel launched first. And imagine this, because even in our own country, what do we talk about? 
the endless wars that we have, right? How long have we been over there in Iraq and Afghanistan? I want to tell you, this is how Israel's war go with the hand and the power of God. In six days, they marched all the way to the Suez Canal and could have taken Cairo. They marched all the way to Damascus and could have cap- captured the capital of Syria. For the first time in the history since the time of Jesus, Jerusalem was a unified, un- undivided city. And so, my friends, prophecy has been fulfilled in our lifetime concerning that. Now, my friends, we turn the page from Ezekiel chapter 37 to Ezekiel chapter 38. And in Ezekiel chapter 38, we watch as this political alliance for the first time in the history of mankind is joining together, where you have Russia, you have Turkey, You have Iran, you have Libya, and the ancient country named Cush, which is a modern-day Sudan. And this is where it gets exciting for Joshua Springs because right in the middle of these two gates of hell, we're building Bible colleges. Hallelujah is that. How fun is that? Right smack dab in the middle of them. And my friends, as Jesus lays out here, He's going to, in this chapter, break it down to the beginning of the Great Tribulation, which lasts seven years. The Great Tribulation begins with a rapture of the church. From that point, yeah, hallelujah. (laughs) From that point, the clock starts in the final seven-year prophecy out of the book of Daniel of which Jesus specifically is going to address. So Jesus talks about the beginning of the Great Tribulation. He talks about the middle of the Great Tribulation, as spoken of by Daniel the prophet in Daniel chapter 9. And my friends, since the Great Tribulation lasts seven and a half years, that middle is the most documented period in Bible prophecy. And it's described in different ways. The middle of the week, because again, the Hebrew word for week or period of seven is Shabua. And so in the middle of that Shabua, it is described as 42 months, three and a half years, 1,260 days, times, time, and a half time. It all designates to Revelation chapter 13, the very middle of the Great Tribulation of which Jesus addresses. After that, he addresses the end and his coming and what's going to happen after that. So last week, I covered the first half of the Great Tribulation. Today, I'm going to focus on the middle of the tribulation, and next week I'll focus towards the end. But let's read on in verse number four, where they say, tell us when these things will be, and what will be the sign that all these things will be fulfilled? So actually, there are two different time things. Destruction of Jerusalem, 70 AD. The second coming and the end of time, Jesus is going to begin talking about. Jesus answering them begin to say, or began to say, take heed that no one deceives you. Now, my friends, you must understand this. In the last days, Jesus tells us there is going to be a falling away of believers. Jesus tells us there's going to be a deception. And my friends, as we read through the Bible, we we see this over and over again. In in 2 Thessalonians, in chapter 2, the Bible says this. Because the Thessalonians, now this is amazing. Paul was only in Thessalonica for three weeks. But in the three weeks, he taught uh, the Thessalonians the complete truth about the rapture of the church and the second coming of Jesus. Now, tribulation had begun for the Thessalonians, so they thought they had missed the rapture that, that somehow is gone. And so Paul specifically writes a letter to correct their misthinking. He says, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, 
We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word of letter as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come. Now listen very carefully. Unless the falling away comes first. And my friends, Jesus, in the book of Revelation, would write seven letters, personal letters from Jesus, to the churches throughout the church age with the, the, the lesson with every single one of them, he who has ears to hear, what? Let him hear what the Spirit says to the church as plural, which means that for every church there was that Jesus wrote a letter to, there was a message for all believers. For instance, the first church, which covers the apostolic age, the lesson to all believers is uh, don't lose your first love. My friends, as we read through the scriptures, we have to understand in the book of Hebrews, there is a warning, lest you drift away. So I want to ask you, is it possible for a Christian to drift away? Is it possible to be deceived? And my friends, we have to be very aware of this in the days that we live in. In the gospel of Luke, Jesus, in the same chapter that deals with all of this, at the end, he writes the disciples. Okay, he's not writing to the world. He writes the disciples and said, but take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighted down. Now, when we're talking about the rapture of the church, does anybody want to be weighted down on that day? And so he's talking to disciples, he's not talking to the world, and he tells them, this is how you can get weighted down, with the carousing, with drunkenness, and the cares of this life, that that day come upon you unexpectedly. And then it goes on to say, for it will come as a snare on all those who dwell on the face of the whole earth. Then Jesus uses two words that we must never forget. Watch and pray. The Bible over and over tells us we're not going to know the day or the hour, but we are going to know the seasons. And he says, I want you to watch and pray always that you may be counted worthy. Listen very carefully to escape all these things that will come to pass. And to stand before the Son of Man. Now, I want to ask you a very logical question. If there was no way to escape and that all Christians are going to have to go through the great tribulation, why would Jesus say that it mattered how you lived so that you weren't caught in a snare and you weren't weighted down? Because if you're not, you can escape these things that are coming to pass. And my friends, we have to understand as we go through here, in the book of Romans, there is a wake-up call. And it's interesting because the Bible over and over talks about people falling asleep, people not being aware of the days in which they live in. And my friends, all we have to do is walk out on the streets of any place, anywhere in the world. Does the world know what's going on? Does the world have a world view that comes from the Bible which tells us beforehand what's going to come to pass? And so, my friends, what do people do? People are lured asleep by Sports Central. They're lured asleep by entertainment today. They're lured asleep by politics and just arguing over mindless things. They're lured asleep by, by Hollywood and sleaze and lust. And in the book of Romans, it says this in Romans 13. In verse number 11, and do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of our sleep for now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. In other words, there's going to be a battle in these last days. Let us put on the armor of light and let us walk properly 
uh, as in the day, not in revelry, not in drunkenness, not in licentiousness, not in lewdness, not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. But let me tell you how the deception of the last days comes. And my friends, again, as I shared earlier, Jesus wrote seven letters to the seven churches with messages for all ages. But what we really got to focus on are the last four churches, for they all exist in our time. The first is Thyatira. It's mixed marriage. It, it, it is uh, the Roman Catholic Church. It's the Roman Catholic Church. And the Lord even says, hey, there's some good things. And there are some great things. There's nobody that's built more orphanages or schools than the Roman Catholic Church or the hospitals, okay? So there are good things, but then he points out the bad. Now, my friends, lest we start cash, uh, ba- uh, Catholic bashing, he moves to the Protestants. The Protestants is the church of Sardis. You have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. They're the church of the great reformation, but they all turned liberal and they all died. Even as you watched in the news this week, there's going to be a split in the Methodist church because the part of the Methodist church wants to ordain homosexuals and the other part goes, excuse me, you can't do that. And, And so there's a split. But then the last two churches... That's where we really got to focus on because that's us. And it's in our world today. And we want to be the church of Philadelphia. That's a church of brotherly love. And the church of Philadelphia, this is how you know it. The Lord says, I have set before you an open door and no man can shut it. I want to ask Joshua Springs in Yucca Valley, California, has God set before us an open door to go into the whole world and preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations? That's not a very enthusiastic yes. Has he opened a door to go into all the world, all the world from this tiny little dusty place to change the world for Jesus Christ and even build churches at the very gates of hell. Has he done that? And my friends, that's exciting. And the church of Philadelphia has not denied the name of the Lord, has not denied the word of the Lord. And my friends, I want to tell you this last week on NBC News, Chuck Todd talking about President Trump supporters said this, they believe in fairy tales like the fairy tale of Noah's Ark in the Bible. That was a major news network. And my friends, again, the attack and the hatred of Christianity is unparalleled, and right now, and I'm looking right at you, Chuck Todd, I am here to declare I believe every single word of the Bible from the beginning of Revelation till the end of Revelation, and I don't care what you say. Now, here's something else. And Chuck Todd, you need to listen to this as well. I guarantee you that you would never say anything against Islam or Muhammad, otherwise you'd wake up without a head. Because the reality is this. The world embraces that, doesn't it? And the news media embraces it as a religion of peace. And yet the reality is something altogether different. But I want to tell you, heaven and earth are going to pass away, but not the word of the Lord. But my friends, the reason why it's important to understand the church of Philadelphia, who we are, The Lord says, I'm going to keep you from the hour of trial, which will come upon the whole world. You see, my friends, it is that evangelical, mission-minded, Bible-believing church that is going to be raptured. But the Holy Spirit tells us, Jesus himself tells us, that in the last days there's going to be a lukewarm church that doesn't stand for what the Bible says. And that, my friends, you have no problem turning on your television set and finding it. It will be on all kinds of channels this morning. 
And you will be able to recognize it because their pastors are flying around in $60 million airplanes. And they build these magnificent buildings. And they spend all this money on themselves. And their pastors live in mansions and live opulent lives. But as far as sharing the gospel with the world, it's not happening because they don't even believe the Bible themselves. And they will never talk about anything that is going to deal with sin because it's going to hurt their offering basket. And my friends, of that church, it's called Laodicea, and Jesus writes about it. You have to understand the Spirit told us it was going to happen. You have to understand Jesus said it was going to happen. And here's what's interesting. That church's assessment of itself, we're rich and we have need of nothing. You know what Jesus' assessment of them was? You are poor, wretched, blind, and miserable. And then he says, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Does anybody like to vomit? It's violent, isn't it? It's a violent experience. And and I want to tell you, Jesus says, repent. So you have to understand, Jesus' number one concern, as we look at the end times, is that we would not be deceived. The Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And that again is why Calvary Chapel is where it is today. Because we recognized there is one thing that every single revival has happened from, and that's teaching the whole counsel of God's word. And that's why my friends tonight, you come, you're going to get the book of Esther. You come Wednesday night, you're getting the book of Exodus. You come on Lady Study, you get the book of Luke. Our youth groups are teaching through the Bible to our young people because the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and it's going to carry us through these days that we live in. Hallelujah. And we're training people how to do that. Now, my friends, as we go on in the book of Mark, we read these words. Jesus answered, began to say, verse number five, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and will deceive many. Then you will hear of wars and rumors of war. Do not be troubled, for such things must happen, but the end is not yet. Let's see, do you think there's wars and rumors of war going on? Uh, Let's see, what happened this week? Oh, that's right, we took out that, that... Uh, Iranian top general. And again, this is something that you'll never hear on the news. He was a part of the Quds forces. K, or I mean, excuse me, Q-U-D-S. You know what Quds is? It's Jerusalem. You see, my friends, Iran Iran makes no secret of what its plan to do is. Our plan is to destroy Israel. All right, they, they made no bones about it. They have planted people in our own country. Did you know that? Did you know today Homeland Security is on high alert because the Iranians have vowed to take out 32 American sites? Are you aware of that? And are you aware that Homeland Security knows that there are homegrown terror organizations within the borders of the United States of America, besides being in Syria, besides being in Lebanon, besides being in the Gaza Strip, besides being in all these other places? Now, my friends, in response to that, our president tweeted... Everybody reads tweets now, right? I mean, this is how countries communicate with each other. They used to have a red phone, now it's Instagram and tweet. But anyway, he tweeted, the United States has targeted 52 Iranian sites that you do anything to us, you're going to be taken out quickly, decisively, and swiftly. For the 52 hostages from back in the day when Jimmy Carter was president and allowed that to happen. So, my friend, do we, do we live in a time where there's wars and rumors of war? Do we live in a time where the alliances of Ezekiel chapter 38 are happening before our very eyes? 
Yes or no? So if it is, we better be awake. And we better be on our guard. And we better listen. I say let's listen to what Jesus has to say. Amen? Amen. And then he goes on to say, but nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines and troubles. These are the beginnings of sorrows. Now again, my friends, in the book of Revelation chapter 1, It says that these events will quickly take place. You need to understand, and sometimes it's translated quickly, sometimes it's translated soon, but it doesn't mean chronologically that it was going to happen soon from the time that he wrote it. What that word literally means in the Greek is quickly and in rapid succession. So here's the thing. Once it starts... What starts the great tribulation is the rapture of the church. Once it starts, it's going to unravel quickly. Seven years are going to pass just like that. That last seven years of mankind uh, history before the coming of Jesus Christ. And again, when I was having kids, guess what? I went to the hospital with my wife to have a baby. We came home without a baby. You know why? Because it wasn't real labor. She thought it was real labor, but it wasn't real labor. Now, let me tell you something. A half hour before every one of our babies born, no question, we're in it, all right? This is the real deal. So here's the word for us, and it's Old Testament, uses the same terminology. As in a baby, what's going to happen? There's a labor pain. Remember when you were first in labor? You know, it was like five, six minutes before the next contraction, right? It wasn't that way right before. So what happens is the intensity starts getting worse and worse. It starts happening faster and faster. And that's exactly how the events of the end. And that's exactly what Jesus says. But we have to understand that this deals with the nation of Israel. Where's the church? I'm not talking about the fallen church or the dead church. But where's, where's the real church during the great tribulation you don't know you should know where the real church is where's the real church we're in heaven with the Lord okay and as we're there with the Lord that the center of Bible prophecy is not Yucca Valley California it's not Washington DC it's not Berlin it's not Paris the center of Bible call, uh, uh, prophecy always centers around one city, one city only. It is the holy city. It is Jerusalem. So my friends, we'll see that during this time period, all of this is written to the Jews because we're in heaven with the Lord. So the scripture goes on to say, but watch out for yourselves. For they will deliver you up to councils and you will be beaten in the synagogue. See, it's Jewish. And you will be brought before the rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. My friends, Jesus gives us lots of parables that deal with with the coming, with his coming and with the rapture boat. And basically, it's interesting, when you read those parables, what happens, what happens to the ten virgins? What do they all do? They all fall asleep, right? Five of them were wise and ready and went in at that coming. But my friends, the Lord's word through all of those parables is this, occupy until he comes. You see, my friends, there are those that get afraid of the end time events that the Bible talks about. And and, and they go, I want to go build a shelter somewhere in Montana and stock up on food and guns. And and me and my family, we're just going to hold out until Jesus comes. What chapter and verse was that? (laughs) Do you ever see that in the Bible? But I want to tell you what Jesus has said. He said, I want you to occupy until he comes. And this is what he gave us as a church. I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel and make disciples of who? All nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey all things I've commanded you. And again, my friends, this is where we have to understand. In the last days... The Lord says there will be perilous times. 
And you know what happens? The Bible describes the hallmarks of it. People will be lovers of themselves and lovers of money. And my friends, we have to understand something. Us coming to church isn't about ourselves. It isn't to make ourselves happy. It's not like we go grocery shopping to just fit whatever we fancy. The church has a mission And the mission is to reach the entire world. And we have a purpose to be a part of that mission with every single one of us doing the little part that we can. And God multiplies it and does something that none of us can do by ourselves. Do you understand? And so in these days that we live in, let's be that church of Philadelphia. Our church, we have a little strength. Let let me tell you, we don't have millions in the bank. But let me tell you what we do. We do a lot worldwide. And and we are blessed by measure, above measure, by all of your generosity, of your time, your talents, your treasures, to be able to do what none of us could do apart from that. And the scripture goes on to say, the gospel must be first preached to all the nations. But when they arrest you and deliver you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you will speak. But whatever is given you in that hour, speak that. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. Now brother will betray brother to death, and a father is child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. Again, we saw this during the days of the Nazis, didn't they? The Nazis took the children. Do you understand? They took the children, indoctrinated the children who then turned in their own families. Does that sound vaguely familiar to you? Because the government desires to indoctrinate lies into our children. And you have to understand, Satan is a terrorist. He's a terrorist that has no problem. Who takes a little seven-year-old boy and makes a slave out of him and, and chains him in a room that he never even gets out of? Who takes a beautiful little girl and, and makes her a slave to perverted people that are going to... Do you realize just this last week, and you can see it on Fox News... A a whole film team went down to Mexico, about 100 miles from the capital of Mexico, is an entire town devoted to taking little girls and making sex slaves out of them. And the police and the government are involved in the whole thing and protect those, those monsters. And so my friends, who does that? But here's what you have to understand. Satan's a terrorist. He's a murderer. He's a liar. What happens in government indoctrination in our own country? There are people who are taking a little boy and whispering in his ear, you may look like a little boy, but you could be a girl trapped in a boy's body or vice versa. And I want to tell you, it is a lie from the pit of hell. It is exactly opposite of what God's word says because God's word says we are created. In the image of God, there are two sexes, male and female, both created in the image of God. Hallelujah. But again, I mean, that's such an obvious lie. But the media and Hollywood and the government wholeheartedly support that lie. And so we got to understand these days in which we live in. The scripture goes on. And you will be hated by all men for my name's sake, but he who endures to the end will be saved. And now we have the middle of the great tribulation. That three and a half years, Revelation chapter 13, three and a half years, 42 months, 1,260 days, and Jesus says this, but when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, that's Daniel chapter 9, And the prince of the people who was to come to destroy Jerusalem. And that's why I mentioned earlier, Titus and his Roman legion, they came from the area of Turkey and Iran. That's where the 10th legion came from. 
And that people, the Bible says, is going to make a peace plan with the nation of Israel to enable them to rebuild their temple. If we go to Jerusalem, the most disputed real estate in all the world is the Temple Mount. Because the Alaska Mosque is built there. It holds 5,000 people. The Dome of the Rock is built there. It's the Muslims' third most holy site. And the Dome of the Rock is not a mosque. You know what it is? A victory celebration denouncing Christianity and the Jews. And it's written in Arabic letters that are feet tall all the way around the inside and the outside, blasphemies against the living God. But the Bible says in the last day, that outer court, that area is going to be given over to the Gentiles to trample. But there is an area on this side where there is absolutely nothing where I believe that the temple was built because it's in line with the golden gate and the golden gate of today is built on the ruins of the golden gate of those days. And, in, and the Jews are going to hail this coming world leader who's going to come as a rider on a white horse. I, you know, I grew up on westerns. When you see the white horse guy, yeah, that's a good guy, right? So the world's going to hail this guy that comes in. In 2 Thessalonians, the Bible gives a warning again that none of this is going to happen until the falling away, which I've already covered, and the man of lawlessness is revealed. That's the Antichrist. And 2 Thessalonians says this, that he will deceive, and I'll read it, in verse number 10 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, uh, it says, and Satan with all signs and powers and lying wonders and with all unrighteous deception among whom those who perish because they did not receive a love for the truth that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie. Now, my friends, what I'm about to say is just pure speculation. I'm not saying it's biblical by any means. I'm just giving you an example of what could happen. At the rapture of the church, how's the world going to explain the disappearance of millions of Christians? One of the things that you'll notice, there's an increase in UFO sightings and all of this stuff. You have to understand, Satan manifests himself as an angel of light. Would it be any problem for Satan to manifest himself as a UFO? Would it be any problem for the Antichrist to say, take some type of connection? And here's an explanation. You know, those intolerant, bigoted Christians, they were all beamed up to be re-educated. Re Would the world buy that lie? And again, I'm just giving you an example of a lie, but there is coming a lie in that day. And the Bible here lays out now that middle of the great tribulation, the abomination of desolation, that happens directly middle. Revelation 13, which I'll go into more next week. Satan, the Antichrist, put his own image in this rebuilt temple and demands that everyone worship him. And no one can buy or sell, say they have the mark. And again, my friends, we live in a day in which everything we do is monitored. There are cameras everywhere. They're going to the cloud. So there's cameras right now. So you can wave back there. We're all on camera. I, I, I don't care what convenience store you go to. It's all recorded. Your phone. Do, do any of you get in your car and your phone tells you where you're going? It's 19 minutes to get home from Calvary Bible Institute to your home. You know, Marilee and I were down in, in Palm Springs. We got in our car and it told us it was 29 minutes to get back to Yucca Valley. You know, well, how's it? No, I'm going home. But anyway, the technology, did you know the guy that invented Tesla is working on an implanted chip that would be like LASIK surgery in your brain to merge human intelligence and machine intelligence together. I mean, we just live in this day which everything is watched, even your homes. All of you that have cameras like we do outside, where's all that going? And would it be possible for someone to be able to track every single move? 
So this whole idea of buying and selling, yeah, well, they, they, we, you know, it, it, it's much more plausible than it used to be when we were killing and trading beaver pelts for sugar, okay? And Jesus here lays out, here's the message. Watch and pray. Don't be afraid. Continue going full steam ahead because the Lord says, I'm going to keep you church from the hour of trial which is going to test all the world. And can I hear a loud hallelujah? hallelujah. So next week we will finish this chapter. Let's stand. There is one very practical thing that we need to do right here and right now. You know where you are with the Lord. You know whether you're the lukewarm or whether you're on fire for the Lord. So the wake-up call of God is this. Now is not the time to be lukewarm. Now is not the time to be out carousing around. Now is not the time to be smoking pot. Now is not the time to be getting drunk. Now is the time to be awake and alert and ready. And the Bible says that when you begin to see these things, look up because your redemption is drawing near. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they're exciting times for us. But I want to make sure everyone here today has the opportunity to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. Not just the Savior for fire insurance. I'm talking about the Lord of your life where you're saying, I'm going to follow the Lord. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I do believe that you died on the cross, that you rose again, and I believe you're coming back again. And I do believe the Bible, every word of it. And I know heaven and earth are going to pass away, but your word is not going to pass away. So I give you my heart. I give you my life. I want forgiveness for my sins. Break the chains of addiction in my life and let me live for you in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. So again, Pastor BK and Rachel are going to be right back here where the big J, uh, S is at the bleachers. He'll be able to share with you there. The guys are back here to sign up for stake and study. Again, couples. Plan on coming Friday night. It's going to be a great night of ministry, totally free to encourage your, your uh, marriage and be strengthened in that. And so uh, come tonight, 6 o'clock, ladies' studies getting back in. So everyone come be a part and let's, let's see the great things that God has done. But more importantly, let's be diametrically a part of what God wants to do in our lives and our church family. Amen? All right. God bless.
Thanks again for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. If you would like to contact us, you can contact us at www.joshuasprings.org or you can give us a call at 760-365-0769. Hope to see you next week and God bless you.